a few thousand years ago, a young prince was born in the Nepali region of Tumbini. This young prince was named Siddhartha, meaning he who achieves his aim. He was part of the Gotama family and member of the Sakaya King Warrior Clan. During the celebrations of the prince's birth, a revered old sage came out of the jungle after many years of solitude to see Siddhartha. His name was Asita. King Sudodana, the father of the young prince, was surprised and happy to see Asita, who also used to be his old teacher. The king asked Asita to foresee his son's future. As Sudodana lowered his infant towards Asita's head, Siddhartha placed his foot on it. Asita started weeping and said to the king and queen, Do not be alarmed by the tears of an old man. I weep because I won't be present to hear your son's teaching, for he will either be a great ruler or a great sage. King Sudodana was angered and concerned. He did not want his son, heir to the throne, to become a preacher. He wanted him to take over the kingdom. The king took no chances. He decided to isolate Siddhartha from anything that might vex or intrigue him. Until he reached his late 20s, Siddhartha knew nothing of the world. He was limited to his three castles, surrounded with delicious foods endless entertainment and hundreds of young beautiful maidens. One day he heard a song which he felt was hauntingly beautiful, yet he could not understand the words, he could only feel. His wife, the beautiful Yasodara, told him that this woman was singing about her homeland. She sang about her longings, her pain and suffering. Siddhartha did not understand suffering and felt the urge to see what was hidden outside of the walls surrounding him. One day, he arranged for a visit outside of the palace, and that is when he saw the four passing sights. His eyes were confronted for the first time in his life to old age, sickness, death, and the serenity of a monk. Siddhartha was overwhelmed. His world was turned outside down. For so many years he had been protected from the fatal realities of life and his heart was heavy. The last sight had a lasting impression on him, for it gave him a path. Seeing a monk, someone who renounced the life of the senses in pursuit of the liberation from suffering, gave him a semblance of hope. Siddhartha was conflicted and tortured. His wife, Yasodara, had just given birth to his son, Rahula. He told his father that even though the birth of his child meant a great deal, he could not bear the thought of them, himself and others, facing ultimate suffering of the cycle of birth and death. One night he left the palace, even though the guard was enforced to prevent his escape. Heavens! granted him safe passage out of the city. As he arrived in the forest, he saw a group of five ascetics. They were dirty, emaciated, and those men, instead of indulging in the pleasures of life, resorted to the suffering of the body to attain liberation. At first, Siddhartha thought this was the path for him. He changed his royalty clothes to rags, shaved his head, and joined the group of men. One day, as Siddhartha was sitting in the lotus position, it started pouring rain. A king cobra came from behind and sheltered Siddhartha with his hood. The other five men who were witness to this scene thus became the former prince's first disciples. For six years, Siddhartha endured horrible physical pain. His body was nothing more than skin, bones, hair, and dirt. He was barely eating and drinking and on the brink of death. One day he heard a teacher giving a lesson to his student. 
he heard those words. The string will snap if it is too tight or no make any sound if it is too loose. At that moment he realized that indulgence in sensual pleasure or extreme pain are just attachments that one should be at peace with the middle path to achieve liberation of body and mind. A young village woman named Su Yahya upon seeing Siddhartha offered him a bowl of rice. This was the first meal in seven years that he had proper food. The five other disciples felt betrayed and deserted him. After that, he sat under the sacred fig, also known as the body tree, to finally achieve enlightenment. Before that, however, he was confronted by five young girls. They seemed innocent at first, but they actually were the five daughters of the demon Mara, sent there to stop Siddhartha in his quest. The daughters were the embodiment of greed, desire, ignorance, pride and fear. Yet Siddhartha remained unperturbable. Seeing that, Mar was infuriated and made one last attempt to lead Siddhartha astray, to no avail. Then and there, Siddhartha, with the earth as his witness, became enlightened and was hence known as the Holy Buddha. Please comment, write down below your struggles and what subjects you want to learn about. Please help us make better content for you guys. Subscribe and click the bell button to be notified. Stay in touch with us. Videos come out every week, don't miss them. Thanks a lot for your support. Get one or more of our ebooks. Some are free, some are almost free. Either way, you will benefit tremendously from them. Check the link in the description box below and don't forget to be inspired and inspire.